Let us open our Bible to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 3. 2 Samuel chapter 3. Pride and grudges against the unity. Pride and grudges against the unity. 2 Samuel 3 verses 1 to 6. David's power increases his family. The length of the internal war between the house of Saul and the house of David tried the faith and patience of David and made his settlement at last the more welcome. Yahweh brought blessing on the house of David. It grew stronger and larger even in the midst of trials waiting for David to become the king of a united Israel. The conquest, the contest, the contest between grace and corruption in the hearts of believers may fitly be compared to this warfare. There is a long war between the bodies of our being. The flesh, which is body and soul, lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. But as the work of holiness is carried on by the action of the word of God, as in Hebrew 4 verse 12, flesh and its corruption, like the house of soul, grows weaker and weaker, while the spirit and its grace, like the house of David, grows stronger and stronger. David's family, David's family registers birth uh, to show four additional wives. Noticeable is the coming of Ammon and Absalom, who later play an important role in the chaotic period of David's kingship following his sin <coughs> with Bathsheba. 2 Samuel 3 verses 7 to 21 Abner revolves to David because of a position because of a position in command many have built so high strongholds of pride that they see their own kings as inferior to themselves. Abner was convinced that he was the only person who could hand the throne of Israel to whom he desired, even though the land was under Philistine's bandage, whom he could not root out. Not root out. Abner thought he his reputation was out of touch. Many, like Abner, are not above committing base crimes, who are too proud to bear reproof, or even the suspicion of being guilty. While men go on in sin and apparently without concern, they are often conscious that they are fighting against God. Many set themselves to serve their own purposes. They are ready to betray those who trust them when they can get any advantage. Yet, Yahweh serves his own designs, even by those who are thus actually by revenge, ambition, or lusts. But as they intend not to honor him, in the end they will be thrown aside with contempt. There are there there was there was really general there was real generosity both to Michael and to the memory of Saul in David's receiving the former wife. 
remembering probably how once he owed his life to her affection and knowing that she was separated from him partly by her father's authority. David had the loyalty to his first wife in 1 Samuel 25 verse 44 and regarded her return as an important reunion for his household, especially because she was from the house of Saul. Ish Bashet granted David's request immediately. Marriage between royal families was often the best peaceful means to seal alliances between enemy nations. The symbolic meaning of this remarriage with Michael was surely an opportunity for reconciliation between David and Ishbosheth. Yet let no man set his heart on what he is not entitled to. If any disagreement has separated husband and wife, as they expect the blessing of Yahweh, let them be reconciled and live together in love. Before his death, Abner kept his word. He met uh, with uh, the leaders of both sides and prepared them to accept David as the king of a unified Israel. Second Samuel 3 verses 22 to 39, Joab kills Abner, David mourns for him. A single wicked heart in a position of power can throw entire nations into chaos and horror. A grudge in Joab's heart, feeding in the thirst of avenging his brother as a hell, uh, worked to undo the unification of Israel that was on the way. Judgments are prepared for such scorners as Abner, but Joab in what he did acted wickedly. Uh, he did not kill Abner in the contest of war or a battlefield which could not be viewed as a murder but as a necessary part of war as we see it in Second Samuel at, at 3 verses 28 to 34 in this chapter and in First Kings 2 verses 30 to 33 David laid Abner's murder deeply to heart and in many ways expressed his detestation of it the guilt of blood brings a curse upon families. If men do not avenge it, Yahweh will. David called the down divine judgment of, on Job, spelled him and his descendants. It is a sad thing to die like a fool, as do those who shorten their own days anyway, and those those who make make no provision for 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 another world who would love power when a man has its name and must be accountable for it yet is hampered in the use of it david should have done uh, his duty with the decision of capital punishment but he trusted Yahweh with the issue. Canal policy spared the Jew. The, the son of David may long delay, but never fails to punish impenitent sinners. He who now reigns upon the throne of David has a kingdom of another kind. Whatever he does is noticed by all his willing people and is pleasing to them. Know this, and the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us take this prayer point. Let us pray to pull down the strongholds of pride and grudges. Let us pray. 
as the warfare is long lasting. Father Yahweh, make me grow stronger and stronger and turn my knee and weaker. Thank you, Lord, for all to your glory. Give the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. As my work of holiness is carried on, Father Yahweh, make my spirit grow stronger and larger and turn my flesh weaker and him weaker. Thank you, Lord, all to your glory. Give the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. As my work of holiness is carried on, Father Yahweh, make my grace grow stronger and larger and turn my corruption weaker and weaker. Thank you, Lord, all to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Every hearty heart around me, boasting with strongholds of pride, Father Yahweh, pull them down. In the name of Yeshua, you that spirit of pride in me, hear the word of God. I come against you. I pull your stronghold down. In the name of Yeshua, you that spirit of impatience in me, I pull you down by the power of humility. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray on the table with my neighbors i will always choose the list of seats thank you lord all to your glory in the mighty name of Yeshua the messiah we pray in the conversation with my neighbors i will not fight for the last word i will take power of listening and of spirits lead in the name of Yeshua I will always humble myself before my neighbor and Father Yahweh will raise me up. Thank you, Lord. On your glory, in the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. When I am accused, I will be my first judge and view the area of my guilt. In the name of Yeshua, I will not set myself to serve my own purposes. I will obey and fill my leader's assignments. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Where others seek division and separation, I will always seek reconciliation of souls. In the name of Yeshua, every wicked heart feeding themselves with grudges around me, I quench your fire by the blood of Christ in the name of Yeshua. Every guilt of every guilt of blood bringing curses upon my family, I wipe you up. I wipe you off by the blood of Christ in the name of Yeshua. When I am emotionally hit hard. I will not take revenge or punish as my heart wants. I will leave all punishment to Yahweh. In the name of Yeshua, thank you, Lord. Your eyes never fails to punish impenitent sinners. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Thank you, Father Yahweh, that you heard our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for your answers to our prayers. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.